uh, what's the chain of title to your film and why is it important? Uh, the real question when you're asking about whether the chain of title to your film is clear is really this. Um, do you, the production company, have the right to use all of the intellectual property that's associated with the film? In other words, do you have, quote unquote, title to the film rights in the same way that you would have title to a house that you bought, for instance? For example, one key question when looking at this chain of title issue is, do you have the right to use the movie's screenplay to make a film? If you don't have the right to use the screenplay or there's some sort of ambiguity in the legal paperwork surrounding the screenplay, that means there are problems with the chain of title. I guess there's a break in the chain of title, you could say. The moment this matters most is when you're trying to get distribution for your film. Your distributor is going to want to make 100% sure that you, the production company, have all of the IP rights that you need in order to make the film. The reason is that the distributor doesn't want to get sued or be threatened with a, an expensive lawsuit later on. Uh, for example, if you forgot to sign a contract with your screenwriter saying that you have a right to make a movie based on their script, it's possible that the screenwriter could come back after the movie is distributed and say that you used their creative work without their permission and they're entitled to some kind of damages award, some kind of share of the profits from the film. And if the screenwriter wins the lawsuit and gets a big award of damages from the distributor, that could wipe out the value of the investment that your distributor has made, all of the time and money that the distributor has spent trying to get your film out there. So that obviously would be a bad outcome. Uh, that's why the distributor is going to do some due diligence on your film by looking over all the contracts that you've signed in relation to your film to make sure that you've got all the IP rights or intellectual property rights that you need in order to make the film. So that's why the chain of title is important. But how do you make sure that the chain of title is clear or unbroken, I guess you could say? Uh, before we get into that, a few obligatory disclaimers. First, this isn't going to be legal advice. This is just purely for your information. Uh, and that's because if I were going to give you legal advice, I would need to understand your particular circumstances and your specific needs. And right now, I'm just a random lawyer talking to you on the internet. Second, this video is going to be about issues of US law. So if your film was made outside the United States or your production company is located out outside the United States, this may not necessarily apply to you. Uh, and finally, if you find this content helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel so I can keep giving you this kind of educational content in the future. Anyway, let's get back to how to make sure your film has a squeaky clean, unbroken chain of title. Uh, I'll go through the various phases of film production and talk about how to do that at every step of the way. So let's start first with pre-production. Uh, making a movie, of course, starts with a script, and the script starts with a writer. You and the writer are going to need to do a little work to make sure that your production company has the right to use their script to make the film. The first thing that the writer is going to have to do to ensure a clear chain of title is to register a copyright in the script with the U.S. Copyright Office. Uh, not only because you'll need to give a copy of the registration certificate to your distributor when it comes time to distribute the film, but also just because you want to make sure that there's a clear written record that there's only one person claiming to be the author of the script for copyright purposes, and that's the writer that you're dealing with and not somebody else. If the writer hasn't done this yet, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to the Copyright Office website at copyright.gov registration, and the website will guide you through the very easy steps of registering a copyright in the screenplay. Um, the writer will just have to pay a $60 fee and upload a PDF of the script and give a little bit of, of detail about their contact information. Usually the Copyright Office gets registration done really quickly, or at least quickly by government standards, which is probably about a month's time. So you want to make sure that the writer has a certificate showing that they have registered the copyright. But you also want to make sure that you, the production company, have an agreement with the writer uh, that makes it very clear that you have the right to use their material in your film. Uh, in this agreement with the writer, you want to make sure that your right to use the script is as broadly described as possible. So in other words, make sure you have the right to use the script in perpetuity throughout the universe in any and all media, including trailers, posters, soundtracks, uh, action figures, merchandise, and, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you also want to make sure that there's a clause in the agreement saying that the writer is not entitled to what's called injunctive relief, meaning an order that prevents the movie from being screened, which would obviously be disastrous for both you and your distributor when it comes time to put the movie out there. Uh, you may think that you have a really good relationship with your writer, you may be close personal friends, and think that some kind of legal kerfuffle is never going to erupt between you. Unfortunately, if you have the high quality problem that your film makes a bunch of money, um, and the writer is getting less money than you, that may cause jealousy and it may cause the writer's relationship with you to turn on a dime. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen this happen 
many times that these kinds of uh, what seem like ideal friendships are, are broken up when it seems like one party is making a lot more money than the other on a business deal. So uh, perhaps unfortunately, you want to make sure that your contract protects you very uh, thoroughly in that situation as well. Uh, finally, when it comes to the script, you want to make sure that if you're paying your writer in exchange for getting the right to use the script in your movie, that you maintain the proof of payment. In other words, you keep the receipt for the payment that you made to the writer, which is something that your distributor is probably going to ask for too. Uh, the next thing that's important for pre-production purposes is to make sure that the right to use the screenplay is assigned to the proper entity. So for instance, if you and your writer sign an agreement saying that you individually have the right to use their script to make a film, but you later create a production company to make the film, you want to make sure that you have an agreement in which you, the individual, assign your production company the copyright and or, or whatever intellectual property rights you receive from the writer. Uh, in all likelihood, it's going to be your production company, not you individually, who ultimately signs an agreement with the distributor. In fact, that's much better for optics purposes. The distributor is not going to want to sign a contract with you, Joe Johnson, or, or whatever your name might be individually. Um, the distributor is going to feel much more secure signing an agreement with Joe Johnson Productions, LLC. But wait, there's more to be done in the pre-production phase. Uh, ideally, if you have the budget for it, you're going to want to have someone review your script and see whether it could potentially infringe the intellectual property rights, the copyright and trademark rights and so forth of any third parties. Um, this is often done by way of what's called a script clearance report, which is something that distributors and insurers uh, will likely require you to do. Uh, to do this report, you're going to have a vendor review your script and look for any instances in the narration or dialogue that might give rise to some type of legal risk. Uh, for instance, if you write a script saying that there's a, a clip from the movie Easy Rider playing in the background of a shot, let's say it's only playing for 15 seconds with no sound. Theoretically, I mean, despite the fact that that's going to play a very small part in your film, it still is a copyrighted clip and therefore it's going to give rise to concerns about copyright infringement. Um, it's possible that a court might consider that clip to be fair use because of the short length of time for which it's played and the fact that, you know, it's probably not going to be what draws audiences in to see your film, this 15 minute silent clip from Easy Rider. But you can never know with 100% certainty whether a court is going to hold something to be fair use because it's such sort of a vague and, and wishy-washy doctrine. So it's important to identify those instances where uh, the script of your film might present some sort of legal risk. And if you need to, address those issues before you actually start shooting, which of course is going to be a lot more affordable than having to do reshoots or try to edit around the offending part of the script once the movie is actually shot. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about chain of title issues that can come up on the financing side of producing an indie film. Um, suppose that you get a loan to make your film and the collateral for the loan in, in the promissory note or whatever document uh, governs the loan is all of the assets of the production company. Uh, one thing that you might not realize looking at a document like that is that all of the assets of the production company are going to include any copyrights that are held by the company, including any copyrights that are associated with the screenplay and the film. And that means that if your production company doesn't make the loan payments, that the lender is going to be able to take the copyrights that are associated with the film, which obviously would be a bad outcome. Uh, if you take out a secured loan like this, that's something that you may end up having to disclose to your distributor, which may affect their willingness to help you distribute your film due to the legal risk that that creates for them. So that's something that you should keep in mind when you're pursuing various types of financing for your film. Next, let's talk about how to make sure the chain of title is clean during the production phase of the film, that is when you're actually shooting the film. Uh, one important thing to realize is that all of the agreements that you have with your cast and crew are actually considered to be part of the chain of title. And that's because every cast and crew member, uh, generally speaking, has the right to control who can profit from the use of their image and likeness. So in the sense, they own intellectual property as well that needs to be licensed to you to permit you to make and distribute the film. Um, so that's why you want to make sure that everyone who's on set, whether they're a cast or crew member, has an agreement with you, a written agreement saying that you have the right to use their image and likeness for the purposes of the film in perpetuity throughout the universe, in any and all media, and so on and so forth. You should do this for crew members, even though they're theoretically not going to be on camera in any of the shots from the film, because they may end up in behind the scenes videos or photos that you may want to use as DVD bonus features or for social media posts or something like that. And you want to make sure that they can't come back and demand money for allowing you to use those images or clips or try to stop you from using them because they don't think that they make them look good and so forth. Uh, likewise, for any locations that are used in the film, you want to make sure that they also assign to the production company the right to depict them in the film. 
Uh, you want to make sure that the owners of these locations, if they get greedy or they get offended by the way that they're portrayed in the film, uh, can't come back and threaten to sue you for defamation or something along those lines. Uh, for instance, let's say you're you're making a true crime documentary about a murder and you're showing a shot of the location where the murder actually occurred. Um, in that situation, you want to make sure that the owner of the location can't come back and claim that your placement of the shot in the film could cause an audience member to believe that the owner had something to do with the murder or they were responsible for preventing it and negligently failed to do so. And you know, all this kind of silly stuff that lawyers can come up when they file lawsuits. Uh, and you would do this with an image and likeness release from the location that would be similar to the kind of image and likeness release that you would get from a cast or crew member. Uh, and on that note, if you're filming a documentary, you want to make sure that everyone you talk to on camera and in an ideal world, everyone who you talk about in the film has signed a contract saying that they release any potential claims relating to the content of the film. So in the ideal scenario, what they'll do is they'll sign a release form saying that they give up the right not only to sue you for any intellectual property violations like copyright and trademark and so on, but also any common law rights, such as the right to sue you for defamation or for invasion of privacy. Um, a distributor for your documentary is going to consider these kinds of release forms part of the chain of title, and it's going to want to see them before it agrees to help you put the film out into the world. Uh, next, let's talk about the post-production phase. Uh, once you finish shooting your film, you may have all your legal paperwork from the cast and crew and think that you've got it made, but you don't quite yet. And that's because you have to make sure that all of the people who work on your film and post, that is the colorist, the editor, the composer, and so on, um, have signed agreements saying that you have the right to use their work in perpetuity throughout the universe in any and all media, blah, blah, blah. Uh, technically, unless they assign them to you, um, they hold the copyrights in the work that they've performed for the film. Uh, so if your music composer contributes a cue or a piece of music to the film, they technically hold the copyright in that piece of music, which gives them the right to collect any profits from the exhibition of that piece. That's why you want a written agreement saying either that they're turning over any copyrights in the work that they produce, that is a so-called uh, work for hire agreement, or says that they're giving you a license to use their piece of music for any and all purposes in any and all media, etc., associated with the film. Um, as with the cast and crew members, you want to make sure that the post-production people's contracts also say that they can't get what's called injunctive relief. In other words, an order preventing the film from being shown because, for instance, it, it violates their copyright or, or something of that nature, because obviously them getting that kind of order from a court would be a disaster for you and the distributor. Uh, also, if someone lets you use a piece of art that they made, like a painting or a sculpture or, or a song or something like that in the film, you, you're going to need to have a written agreement with them saying that you have a license to use that image or that recording in the movie. And that way you avoid any copyright infringement concerns coming from them as well. So I hope all that was helpful uh, in understanding the kinds of documents that you're going to have to put together to make sure that your chain of title is clear and to satisfy your distributor. Uh, if I haven't answered any questions that you have on this subject, please put them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And thank you for watching.